Oh, she looks great. I'll share the screen in a minute. <laughs> Just one of those crazy things One of those bells that now and then rings Just one of those things It was just one of those nights Just one of those fabulous flights Trip to the moon on gossamer wings Just one of those things If we thought of it Of the end of it When we started fading That our love affair was too hot not to cool down. So goodbye, dear name. Here's hoping we meet now and then. It was great fun, but it was just one of those <laughs> yeah. All you want right. to know why running on the treadmill seven days a week doesn't work? <laughs> that was somebody, <laughs> somebody talking about the treadmill. That was definitely not you. Hello, Mike Renzi. Cool. Well, hi, ladies and gentlemen. Happy pre Thanksgiving. And um, my guest today is Mike Renzi. And um, we both had some interesting technical issues, you know, leading up <laughs> to <laughs> this moment, but we're cool now. I'm just, I'm just finishing my little setup here, but I, I'm really very happy to know that you are here talking to me and I, and thank you very much for, you know, giving us this, this uh, time. I'm very honored, Kathy, to be talking with you, and I thank Mike Lang for even recommending me to uh, be on your show. Thank you. The great Mike Lang. <laughs> Mike that is amazing. Lang. Oh, and uh, Marla, Marla Clement is here. Ah. Yeah. So I guess Rebecca was planning to record with you before she passed. She Rebecca was. Harris, yeah. We had it planned, yep, yeah, because we had done a concert maybe about a month before that, and uh, it was so successful and we kind of just linked in perfectly musically. So anyway, but it huh, never happened, but Rebecca yeah. was great. Something else. You know, I'll tell you a little story about Rebecca and me. Okay. Um, when I was in ju what's it, junior high, junior high, high school, junior high, I think it was junior high. Um, I was in a, um, well, junior high and high school. I was in this uh, all city. It was a very special chorus and orchestra and uh it was led by i can't remember their names I'll, I'll have to tell you i'll find the information and tell you i'm sure you knew who they were but they were you know well-known arrangers and um so they gathered a you know relatively small group of kids from all these all the schools in boston and uh we were mm -hmm. called the young bostonians or something and um we recorded <laughs> and we toured and stuff and that's where i met rebecca and she was a year older than me. 
and um, and her name was not Rebecca Paris. It was something else. Yeah, I, <laughs> and, I don't remember who it was. Yet. Yeah, and um, uh, yeah, so she was kind of she was kind of my protector because she was a lot taller than I was, <laughs> <laughs> and she, you know, a year older, and um, yeah, so we were friends. And then for many years, we we didn't. Uh, communicate. And then one day um, when I was an adult and living in LA, somebody said, well, you know, you must know Rebecca Paris. And I was like, no, I, I don't know Rebecca Paris. Anyway, <laughs> it turned out that that was her and we got back in touch. And then, you know, then we were friends again. And she, she came out here a bunch of times and I set up uh, workshops for her and gigs for her. And great. yeah. Um, what a great singer. Oh, yeah, she had she had the sound, and she also had that ability to uh, to tell the story. Yeah, yeah, that was really one of her strong things. Yep, loved it. Yeah, she's really oh Ruth McCluskey. Thank you, Marla. That was her name, Ruth McCluskey. Thank you, because my brain apparently isn't working yet. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Marla. I love you. <laughs> uh, Neil Rosengarden says hello to you. Oh, hi, Neil. <laughs> Uh, hi, Roland. Uh, my friend Roland Askerens, who's a musician, and uh, although he doesn't play out professionally, but he's a guitar player, and um, he's an old friend of mine, and he's on here a lot, so he says hi, too. Um, well, okay, so Mike Renzi, so much to talk about with you. I, I know that uh, you had a very long, intense career with uh I know that you accompanied singers. Was that the main the main thrust of your work, accompaniment to singers, or did you have a your own your own? I know you did do a record of your own too, right? At least one. One, but that was a long, long time ago. Uh, it happened. Uh, the, the accompaniment thing sort of happened because um, of a TV show that was up in Boston. I was the pianist on it. It was a local, well, actually, an all New England show. Uh -huh. And uh, the hostess of the show was Sonia Hamlin. Do you know her? Yeah, I remember that name. Yeah, right, well, Sonia, it was Sonia's show. And up the road from the studio in Boston, there was a great dinner theater. And they would put on Broadway musicals. And whoever was appearing there for a week or two would be Sonia's co-host for a week of television shows. Wow. So um, it was this way. Monday, we would do live from 11 to uh, 12, or 12, 12.30, I guess it was. And then Monday afternoon, we would tape uh, two shows and then go in live on Wednesday and tape the remainder of the week. Anyway, so during that time, Sylvia Sims, remember Sylvia Sims? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Sylvia was up there doing Hello, Dolly, and uh, she came to be uh, co-hostess with, uh, with uh, Sonia. So I started playing for Sylvia in... She was trying to throw me some curveballs, and and she couldn't stop me. I mean, uh, the story was she came up to me and said, "What's your name?" I said, "Mike." She says, uh, "All right, Mikey," just like that. Okay. <laughs> she said they want me to sing, so um, I'd love to sing more than you know. I said, "Oh, I, I know more than you know." She says, "Yeah, but I do the verse." I said, "I know the verse." So it started that way. She couldn't stop me, and then she went along. I want to do your Nera. I do the verse. I know the verse. Anyway, long story short, was at the <laughs> end of the sessions, she said to me, this was in March now. She said, in May, I'm doing a show in New York City, where she lived, at Town Hall. It's a series, an all subscription series called uh, Sunset, Sunset Series. She said, it starts at 6.30, it's over at 7.45, and it's a, a great audience. And would you consider coming to New York to play for me for this? Now, meanwhile, I was ensconced in Boston and doing all kind of work and stuff like that. So I said, sure. Long story short, as I get into New York, rehearse with her, do the show. And uh, after the show, backstage, come some of the guests. And one of the guests was Cy Coleman, hmm. you know, the great Cy Coleman. So yeah. uh, he said, you're the piano player, right? I said, yeah. He said, no, you did a nice job. I said, thank you, Mr. Coleman. I'm you know, honored that, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he said, have you moved to New York? I said, because she mentioned I was from Boston or Rhode Island. And uh, I said, no, but I'm thinking about it. He said, well, if when you do move, he said, get my number from Sylvia. He says, call me. I'm always getting asked to recommend piano players. All right. So anyway, that was May. 
I decided to move to New York in August and I give him a call. There were no cell phones then. So I call and it was out to lunch and she said, call back around three, he'll talk to you. I did. He remembered who I was and he said, you know, timing is everything. He said, I just got off the phone with George Ween. Mel Tomei has come to New York to do a month at Marty's and he's looking for a piano player. Would you like to do the gut? Well, he says, do you mind if I recommend you? Wouldn't you like, I said, yeah, I'd love it. Anyway, that's how it all started with Mel. So all the singers used to come in and then it started like, uh, are you available? Maureen McGovern, then Peggy and everybody else and Lena and that's how it all happened. So I got stuck behind the, the singers, but I love it because it gives me a chance to orchestrate basically yeah. rather than play a chord in a jazz field. I try to do colors and I do pride myself on one thing. I know most of the lyrics to all the songs that I do know, and that helps me color the accompaniment. It gets the sentiment or the emotion of the song. And I can do colors and harmonies that make sense to what the story is saying. So yeah, I did get behind a lot of singers, but, I also had a nice little studio thing going. There wasn't that much studio work in New York at that time. There's even less now. Uh, but uh, I did uh, some movie dates. I did jingles, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. So that was nice. Oh, and I also did the soap operas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was good. I was an on-camera on camera pianist for uh, uh, one of the cafe scenes. That was <laughs> as the world turns. Then I got... <laughs> I got busy writing uh, scores for underscores for all my children and a lot of the ABC oh. soap opera, which yeah. was nice because it got me uh, three Emmys. Oh, so it was good. wow. And then the Sesame Street thing happened for 11 years. Oh, you know, wow. There's, <laughs> oh yeah. And then the Sesame Street hat. Wow. So you were, and you were, I'm sorry, you know, I've, I read about you, but I don't remember reading about the Sesame Street well, I don't know, maybe if it was Wikipedia, it might have been a, a, a not an up-to-date uh, posting, but yeah. I did that from 1999 to 2010. Wow, yeah, so you, is, yeah. what, so I'm trying to remember what occurred on that show musically. So was oh, it a small it was, group or? No, well, there was this, I had a band, I was a music director and I had to do music for all the scripts all the big songs, the big Sesame songs were already written by then, like the theme and I Don't Want to Live in the Moon and, and all that stuff and the Cookie Monster song. But I had to do endless arrangements in every different style according to what the script writer wanted. So, and I also wrote some songs for uh, newer scripts. So uh, it was 11 years of great work, a lot of work in the office every morning at eight. Wow. And production meetings at noon and uh, we were always, the music department was always two weeks ahead of the filming. So oh. I could make demos to give to the Muppeteers, the people who did the Muppets, so they would learn their material because they each had songs and stuff like that. Wow. So that was, uh, it was a great gig, actually. Um, yeah, it, it sounds uh, like I had a Sesame Street band that comprised of uh, trumpet, who played all, all flugel and everything else and bugle and, and piccolo trumpet. And I had a woodwind player who played every every instrument <laughs> i mean everything from bassoon oboe uh, bass saxophone everything flute piccolo uh piano bass drums guitar and percussion so i would score for those all the time and i of course with the world of overdubs i could make a big band arrangement with uh, two guys <laughs> yeah yeah who i'm sorry who were the musicians uh i had glenn drews on trumpet wally kane on all the woodwinds Steve Baganetti on guitar, Bob Cranshaw at first on bass, and then mm -hmm. he gave it to Ben Brown when he retired. And the drummer was Ricky Martinez. Percussionist was the contractor, uh, Danny Epstein. Mm -hmm. And he had been with Sesame Street for forever, because when I got there, he had already been there for many years. So he was, I would say, I need a trombone player for this special, and he would get him. He would, he would take care of all that. That must have yeah. been, that was... That sounds like a really great gig, like a really, um, you know, committed uh, work and um, good people to work with. And um, yeah. yeah, just uh, rewarding in so many different ways. Very. Yep. Very, very yeah. rewarding. And of course, with that, I've gotten some Emmys too. So it was nice. Yeah. And when you first were offered the gig, what, what did you think? Did you, did, were you familiar with, you, you were probably yeah, familiar I, with it. I was. The, the, my, my predecessor, yeah. who was an excellent musician, 
uh, he didn't quite know how to write for big bands. And they were doing a series called Cab Calamos at that time. <laughs> Of course, Cap Calloway. Thing. <laughs> yeah. And they wanted a big band in the Cotton Club style and stuff like that. So um, the recording engineer said, well, call Mike Wins. He does that a lot because I had been doing books for, you know, big band arrangements for a lot of singers. So he gave me what to do and I arranged it. And the uh, uh, executive director was there and she happened to like my work. So they started using me as a an outside arranger. And that's how it happened. Now, when they didn't renew his contract about... Two, two years later, two or three years later, they called me. And in fact, I was in London with Jack Jones. <laughs> and I was staying at the Hotel Cumberland, right at right in Marble Arch there. And I got back from one of the gigs and the television is lit up and it says, call Danny Epstein as, <laughs> as soon as possible. So I said to myself, they must want another arrangement, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Anyway, I call him and he says, no, they're going to make a change. And they want to know if you would be interested in taking the gig. I said, Yes. <laughs> because it was financially very good. Yes. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's how it all happened. Wow. And, and I stayed with them 11 years. So you didn't, obviously you didn't go on the road for 11 years, but you no, for probably... 11 years I was, I was in the office and in, in, in recording studios doing television, uh, uh, two weeks of television shows. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever, did you ever play for people in, who came through New York? During that time, or it was just too much. Yeah, I did. Um, uh, who did I play for? I I actually played with. Uh, she didn't come through. She was actually living in New York. Uh, Bet Midler had a thing. Uh, try to save the uh, the park along the Hudson River, and I got called to play that. Um, a Brian Stokes Mitchell, hmm. you know Broadway guy. He yeah. did a show at Feinstein's at the Regency, and I played for him there. Barbara Cook. Oh. Oh, I could, yeah, I could yeah. call to play a couple of things. And I would do that. That was wild. I would get out of the office at five, go home, put on a tuxedo. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> was just gig, thinking like. Get the gig, get done at 11 or 12, go home, try to sleep and get up at about 6.30 to be in the office by 8, 8.30, you know. But you anyway, must, I mean, you, you had, yeah, you had a good time, I'm sure. <laughs> it was a great time. So I have to ask, who yeah. was your favorite character? On Sesame Street. Elmo. Elmo. Pain in the butt. I I I like the count. The you count what? Oh the yeah, the count. Yeah. And, and the cookie. Uh huh. <laughs> of course, Piggy, Piggy, and Kermit are my two favorites. But we were not allowed to use um, Piggy as a character in scripts. There was some kind of contractual thing going back, way, way back. Oh, I also like Big Bird. And uh, Carol Spinney, the guy who did Big Bird, was a fabulous guy. And uh, to be stuck in that costume for eight hours under those hot lights, roller skating with it on, he was a great guy. <laughs> so I like I like uh, Cookie. Uh, I like Big Bird and uh, the Count. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just had to ask. <laughs> yeah, the, the, <laughs> oh, hey, Pepper, Pepper Mache. She's she's a really great singer. Pepper um, Mache, love it. Yeah, do you know her? No, but I love the name Pepper oh. Mache. <laughs> well, her other name is Sister Jean, and she's uh, she has been a singer who's uh, kind of crossed from uh, R and B and then into blues, and uh, she's a really incredible singer and a really lovely person. Hello. Uh -huh. And hello, Leslie. Uh, thank you. Happy Happy Thanksgiving to you guys too. Um, wow. Yeah. So that 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 was that's a big chunk of your life. Eleven years. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And before that, the soaps. So it was. And uh, I was on the road a lot with Mel Tome, Maureen McGovern, Lena Horn. I did the Lena Horn Broadway show uh, from. Uh, not the beginning of 80 to the middle of 81. Wow. Yep. So that was great. That was uh, every night at the theater. Yeah. Yeah. She, she was, Lena was great. I mean, they were all great, but Lena would come out on that stage and the energy would change. Huh. So she came out, lights were on and she, she just did it. She had that thing when she walked out, something happened, you know, and it was all a high energy thing. I'm not talking about uh, frenetic energy. It was just 
something happened where everything just kind of lit up. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. yeah. Talk about stories. She told me some stories about her Hollywood days. <laughs> They're all x-rated, so we can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can just imagine, boy. <laughs> Well, she, she was, was in, in high she demand. Was, <laughs> she was married for a, a long time to Lenny Hayden, who was the music uh, director at MGM after Johnny oh. Green. Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. So anyway, yeah, it was an interesting time. Yeah. Um, I wonder if I can, it would be just fun to um, see, maybe go go looking a little bit on YouTube for, I mean, just so far what we've talked about, but, um, and also I think I did bring you up here and we'll go and we'll look and you, you can tell me what, <clears throat> what would, might be fun to look at here. I'm going to share my screen and, um, I like to, I like to do a music, you know, here and there. Um, so can you see my screen? I can. Yes. Okay. So with a beautiful solo by Mike Renzi at Birdland. This, any of these you? <laughs> the, the clown in the middle. Wow, what a cutie pie. Yeah, I was, I was uh, 15 years old. Right here? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I got my union car when I was 13, so that was that. Have you uh, seen this see. little film? Let me, let me go by. Go, uh, let me see if there's anything on there. Is there? Um, is there a? Uh, let me see. Oh, that, yeah, no, that was. There's a, a nice. It was Mel Tomei's last record before he got sick. It was done in 1996 at the Disney Institute. I think it's called An Evening with Mel Tomé. Let's see. An evening, if we... at, 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 An Evening with Mel Tomé at the Disney Institute. There, there it is right there. Right here? See, it's, that's it right there. This record There's, right here? Yeah. Okay. There, if you can play um, uh, pick, your, uh, pick Yourself Up, that's, okay. that's really a good track. Okay, great. Yep. What you're going to hear now comes from an old Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers <laughs> movie circa 1936. This movie was called Swing Time. Hey, teacher, teach me something. Nice teacher, teach me something. I'm as awkward as a camel. That's not the worst. My two feet haven't met yet. But I'll be teacher's pet yet, cause I'm gonna learn to dance or burst. And Ginger sings, well, nothing's impossible, I have found. <laughs> when your chin is on the ground, you pick yourself up, dust yourself up, start all over again. Oh, don't lose your confidence. If you slip, be grateful for the pleasant trip. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, start again. Work like soul inspired, till the battle of the day is won. You may be sick and tired, but you'll be a man, my son. Will you remember the famous men had to fall to rise again? Take a deep breath, dust yourself off. Take a deep breath, pick yourself up, start all over again. And Fred sings, I'll get some self-assurance if your endurance is great. I'll learn in easy stages if you're courageous and wait. To get the strength I want to, I must hold on to your hand. Maybe by the time I'm 50, I'll get up and do a nifty, nifty Mike Renzi at the piano. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> nobody better. That sounds suspiciously like yo, Han Sebastian Bach. How I love Johann Sebastian Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach. Let's do a little more of J.S. Bach. Ba ba da, ba ba da, ba ba da ba da ba da ba da. Biddle ding dong dong ding ding da ba da ba da ba da ba da. Biddle ding dong ding dong 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 ding dong 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 ding dong 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 dong. Biddle dong ding ding biddle dong ding biddle dong da ba da ba da. Biddle dum 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 dum. Ba ba da ba dum bum bum bum. Ba dum 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 dum. 
One more time for J.S. Bach. Work like soul inspired till the battle of the day is won. You may be sick and tired, but you'll be a man, my son. But you remember the famous men had to fall to rise again. Take a deep breath. Dust yourself up. Take a deep breath. Pick yourself up and start all over. Start all over. Start all over. Yeah! <laughs> Mike Renzi. How nice. That's so cool. That's so nice. cool. Yeah. Talk about talent, man. Mel, yeah. Mel Tome was unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, besides being a great singer, he was a, a great arranger, a great songwriter, uh, just a great a, a, a music, I don't know how to say this, but a great, he could make medleys that made perfect sense lyrically and musically. He would just, he could do everything. He was really, a lot of people don't know this also, that Mel, Mel wrote a lot of TV scripts for the, uh, for uh, the Virginian oh. Gunsmoke. I mean, yeah, he was quite prolific. Oh, and I, I had no idea of that, I think. Yep. Yeah, no, he, a lot of I know, besides on. the Christmas song, did he did he write more music that was uh, very well known? Uh, the Christmas song, of course, is the is the the, 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 the most well known. Uh, he wrote a great song called Born to be Blue. Oh, yeah, right, of course. Uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> That's a great I, song. Yeah. yeah. The only time, of course, needless to say, the only time we ever did the Christmas song was around that time of year. Um, but uh, Born to be Blue, we did some shows. In Europe, we did it a lot because they seem to know it. But uh, in the States, we didn't do it much. No. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great song. Great it's song. It's a great song. I love it, too. Yeah. Yep. We have a question from my friend Roland. Um, how long did you work with Eartha Kitt, and how was oh, yeah. it working with her? Well, let's see. I worked with Eartha, I guess, uh, made that one record with her back in business, which was a, a, a fun thing. We worked on that record for about four months. She would come to my apartment in New York, and we'd rehearse, and then she'd come back and say, you know, I've changed my mind, so we have to work on new material. So we, that went on for four months. We finally settled on a on a on a rundown and uh, we worked, she was great. Fun, a lot of fun, uh, generous. She would come to my house, my apartment with the uh, 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 cookies and stuff that she stopped at a fancy bakery to buy. <laughs> I would make the coffee and we'd sit there and chat for a while then we'd go to work. She was great. <laughs> Such yeah. an unusual artist. Oh, yeah, very. Wow. Yeah. Nobody no, really was, like uh, her at all. <laughs> she, was, she was great to work with. Uh, she was very fussy about uh, what song she wanted to do. Uh, that's why we, we, we couldn't, the record producer and the guy who owned the label was making suggestions and she was not going along with a lot of them. So that took some time, but, but I give her credit because she stuck to her guns. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, would have been interesting to talk to her and see how, how the whole thing came up. You know, actually, I, uh, about a month ago, I saw something on Ella Fitzgerald and it was kind of a, it was a personal history. And uh, I, I mean, I've been an Ella fan since I was five, but I never, mm -hmm. I guess I never went into her personal history and, you know, looked for it, but 
man, there was a lot in there that I would not have even imagined. I mean, it was pretty deep, actually. She wasn't just, I, I, you know, the persona, her persona of the, you know, nice girl kind of, you know. <laughs> she, rose, she rose all above it. And her childhood wasn't easy. I, I read also a lot of that stuff. Yeah. But she she, uh, she did that natural talent. She was originally auditioning as a dancer at the Apollo. Oh. And ended up somebody said, you got to sing because we're missing a singer or something. And that was it. <laughs> I mean, fate, you know, it's a serendipity, kismet, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it yeah. Worked. It worked for her. <laughs> Didn't somebody like, not Ray Charles, but uh, Nat King Cole? Or, and that's, somebody pretty famous uh, also was like that. They were piano player, and but they had to that's sing. Nat Cole. Nat Cole was a great, great very influential jazz pianist. Yeah. I, the story goes that he had a trio and the club owner said, we're going to let you go because we want a singer unless you can sing. And he started singing something like that. I could, yeah. I could be, yeah. I could be wrong on some of the details, but it, it went something like that. Yeah. I think that's true. And of course, Oscar Peterson sang, but I mean, he, that wasn't, apparently that was not his, his uh, karma. <laughs> his karma was being a piano player. Um, well, yeah, he sure. <laughs> Oscar did sing, though. I know, I, I know. And great sound too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was, I was wondering while I was listening to that great arrangement of, that Mel and you did. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I grew up listening to music like that. My dad was a sax player. My mom had been a singer. My sisters, two singers, sang and one played piano. So we we were always singing, and and yeah. that was the music. That was the style of music that we were listening to a lot. You know, and I mean, of course, rock and roll happened, and we got into that. But but the, that was really what is in my beginnings. I just wonder is is arrangements like that happening still? Um, I uh, have. A young man who sings quite well. His name is Nicholas King. Um, he's from Rhode Island, but he lives in New York. And he he started actually in the theater when he was like five years old, playing a teacup in Beauty and the Beast or whatever it was. And uh, he he did a Carol Burnett show on Broadway. He so he could sing from the beginning, but he's really developed into a great singer now. He is a big Mel Torme fan, and he likes that kind of a thing. So. For his uh, two CDs that I did with him, we kind of uh, went that way. We put some medleys together, and and it uh, it's on that style. Yeah, so he's one of the younger guys who can do it. And of course, there's a lot of singers now. You know, like they're out in California, most of them, the girls, Tierney Sutton, and all those people, and they're all great singers. Uh, I haven't heard any medleys, but I'm sure they do them, and so it's just still around. Yeah. Kurt Elling, and he's, you know. Yeah. Yep. I heard, um, it's kind of, it's a few years old now, but this arrangement, have you heard the Kurt's version of uh, America by Paul Simon? Uh, I have not heard that, but I heard about it. It's gorgeous. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah, really gorgeous. I guess Mike Lang is probably involved in some, some uh, well, especially recordings in that ilk, right? With the big arrangements and. Oh yeah. Well, he's besides being, you know, on, on a ton of movies and all that stuff, he's one of the first call guys as well. He should be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. Dennis Dow, many nights at the Kings and Queens, part of my education. Oh my goodness. That's when I was, that picture when I was 15 years old. Yeah. Looking at the King Queens. <laughs> I was a uh, junior or senior in high school. I used to bring my homework. At that time, we used to have homework, you know, the kind you write. <laughs> and uh, I would bring it and do it between sets. And of course, it was a great learning ground for me. I was learning a lot of songs and playing with a lot of different people. So so when you were, wh when did you start playing piano? Uh, I started taking classical lessons when I was seven. Mm -hmm. I, I was playing by ear before that a little bit like, my parents would play a record and, and I could go to the piano and figure out some stuff, easy stuff, you know, three note chords with a melody. Yeah. And then I started taking some lessons and it was all 
classical and stuff like that. And but uh, I uh, I learned I was learning songs because I wanted I loved you know the what we call now the Great American Songbook, the standards of that time. And yeah, so that's how it all kind of fell in. And I started doing local gigs, weddings and stuff like that. The, before the day of the DJ. <laughs> <laughs> and weddings. that. Yeah, and and on the East Coast in that area, they were called GB. General business. That's right. Because my dad, you know, he was a working musician. Yeah, I did a lot of general business gigs, yep. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I know. When I came out here, there were a few things that happened when I came out to L.A. Because I was used to growing up with, you know, guys who played just as good, you know, Girl from Ipanema, just as good in D as they did in, you know, F or G. In F, the original, yeah. yeah. No, I, I get and, that, yep. Yeah, when I came out here, people, the musicians were like a little, oh, well, I'm going to have to think about that. I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't get that at all. And then, you know, well, yeah. The playing in different key thing, that's something uh, when I was, it's, it's important for a pianist uh, and accompanist, actually, to be able to play, if you know a song, to play it as well in E as you would in E flat or F. And with pianists, it's, it's all about the chord voicings and stuff like that. Now, if you're used to playing when you're, free, when you're first beginning, a juicy fat Bill Evans type chord in the key of E flat or F, and then you get to E and you go, oh, wait a minute. Then you start training yourself. And I, I spent a lot of hours taking a ballad like Skylock and, and playing it one day in C, the next day D flat going up chromatically. And if I was stuck, like saying the key of B and not making it sound the way I, I would in B flat or C, I would stop and take the time out. A lot of guys on the East Coast do that. You're going to spend time to do it because it's all a matter of familiarity. Yeah. Nothing is tough. It's all unfamiliar. Yeah. Once you get familiar with it, it becomes easy. Yeah. And yeah. I'm quoting Kenny Werner, who's a brilliant jazz pianist, who wrote a great book called Effort. Effortless mastery. Yeah, you know that. we talked about that a lot on this yeah. show. And he, he, he yeah. says that. It's just all familiarity. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, yep. it's so true. And it's, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I read a quote that uh, creativity was curiosity, which I loved. It's like, yeah, yeah right. I haven't you know? heard that one, but I like it a lot. It's nice, huh? Yeah, yeah you get I curious like about the key of B, you know, it's like, it's not like, you know, because being a singer and, you know, being around different pianists and such, and also as a teacher, I, you know, I'm always getting students who <laughs> have trouble with this. You know, the player will say, don't ever, no, can't be in B. It has to be in B flat because, <laughs> you know, it's like, no, you know, no, that's not true. If B is just as great, you know. It's got a great sound. See, it's yeah. all the key sound different. Things happen. Yeah. Uh, when I was working with Marie McGovern, by the way, I made two records with her, just a piano and voice. Oh. Uh-huh. I'm very proud of those records because there's no rhythm section. Uh, naturally, it's just piano and voice. And um, she would sing things in all kind of keys and it gave me a great time to opportunity to really expand on that direction. As a matter of fact, if you could find one of those things, you might want to play it if I you will. have time. I'll do it right now. Yeah. By the way, uh, Melba Joyce says hello. Oh, hi, Melba. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, let album, me go look. <laughs> the second one, which we did in California, we recorded it in California. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called The Pleasure of His Company. Okay. The Pleasure of His Company. That's the name of the album. <clears throat> First, we'll look on YouTube. <laughs> Because YouTube has everything. Okay. Um, you know how to do it. The pleasure of... Pleasure of company, yeah, Marie McGovern. Hold on a second. I bet this is it right here. But anyway, we'll go look for it. Nope. That, I guess it's a movie. Maureen McGovern. Let's see. Uh, oh, here we are. Uh, oh, but that's a different song. Let's see. <clears throat> well, let's do it a different way. Let us do this. And let's do this. 
and we'll take away the 1961. And then they give me this, huh? That's the that's the album right there, uh, The Pleasures Company. That, that track, Once Upon a Time, is one of the tracks, but Lucky to Be Me, the great Bernstein, Condon and Green song is the opening track, and that's pretty damn nice. Um, let's see. And is what is the name of that record? The Pleasure of His Company. It was oh, it the, is The top. Pleasure of His yeah. Company. Um, I haven't seen it right here. It was on the top. It, oh, it this? the very first record. That right there. That one there, yep. Oh, but I think there. This song is uh, "Once Upon a Time." Well, they don't have. Uh, well, you could play that if you want to. Uh, uh, yeah, but you built up the pleasure of his company. <laughs> but no, this is this is the same record, right? With you. Yeah, it is. Uh, "Once Upon a Time" is one of the tracks on the record. And it's just it's you too, right? It's As just we do, yes. I think that would be beautiful, but I will I will have to look for that song. his hand in mine and said he loved me so but that was once upon a time very long ago once upon a we sat beneath a willow tree Counting all the stars And waiting for the dawn But that was once upon a time Now the tree through his hair how we always laughed as though tomorrow wasn't there we were young and didn't have a care Beautiful. Boy, she's a stunning singer. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> he has a voice that uh, uh, that you wouldn't believe in a, an incredible range. Just a great, great singer. Yeah. Um, that was really beautiful. I want to, I definitely want to ask some questions. I do want to say that, uh, did I tell you that Melba Joyce joined and yes. she said, oh, yes. Well. And uh, Elaine Dame, who's a really great singer from Chicago. I think Chicago or Detroit. I always get, I might say that wrong. Sorry, Elaine. Anyway, um, yeah, so, okay, so being a singer who especially loves duos, and mm-hmm. I've, I've sung with some really beautiful players like Ross Tompkins and I recorded together, and he was an elegant accompanist, you know. And um, there's, so, so uh, let's see. 
singers obviously have different ways of singing from singer to singer. And some singers sing right on the downbeat and some singers wait or, or sing ahead. You know, most jazz singers play around with that. And, um, and that timing is really crucial. And I always tell, uh, I always tell my students, you know, when I do workshops, especially singing rubato, it's an art. It's not just like singing out of time and whatever. It is an art and it, there's a real relationship that happens. And, and uh, the pianist really has to be an amazing pianist to do it well, which you are an amazing pianist and you do it fabulously. Um, could, could you talk on that a little bit? Um, let me see. Here's how I feel about that. I'm a, really a frustrated singer. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't sing, but I know the words and I love the melodies. While I'm accompanying, it's going through my mind as if I was singing almost. So, for example, in that thing with uh, with Maureen, she's totally out of tempo for a lot of it. And I'm waiting for her, but I'm also thinking she phrased it this way. Yes. Now I'm singing it. Now's my time to fill. It's almost the way Shirley Horn played for herself and the way Blossom Deary played for herself. Uh, they they knew how to accompany themselves, and I'm doing sort of like that, except I'm not singing, um, but I am as if Maureen McGovern were me singing. So I think about it that way. And again, I alluded to earlier, um, knowing the lyric helps me with the type of accompaniment. Um, for example, like on the end of that first phrase, never comes again. Um, I put on top of the A flat chord, I put a D flat minor with an A flat bass because I didn't make it a major because never comes again is almost like a melancholy type thing. So I made it a minor and then I resolved it to major. I think I heard that. I, I'm not sure yeah. if that's the spot, but I, my ear was like, Oh, and also you almost, you hinted at it right before, like there was a, a note in the chord that you hinted. And then when the chord happened, it had that, was that the spot? Yes, I, I, yes, that was the spot. And yeah. so that that comes from learning the lyric and what the song means, yeah. the emotion behind or the intent. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, it, yeah, it's a great... It, the, the music of, of that kind of music, the, the, the songs today are, are great. And they're, they're, they're more, um, you know, they're more popish, but some of them are really great. Like, for example, Leon Russell writes great stuff. Brenda Russell, like, you know, those are great songs. A Song for You, Get Here, those are the, you know, but they're all great. Yeah. But those, those other songs just have something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just, uh, and it's well, important to know the lyrics. You know, uh, speaking of uh, Melba Joyce, yesterday uh, we heard... Um, I think we heard one song, two, no, we heard two songs that she's written. She's written about 30 songs. Oh, it's, it's like, it's like, a, it's a great standard. I mean, and her daughter sang, sang one of, well, sang both of them, but, uh, you know, it was the song I said, please send me the chart, you know, <laughs> that kind of song. I didn't know that Melba wrote songs. I, I really, I think I did know that, but I didn't know she was that, let's say, involved in it gorgeous really beautiful writer wow. music and okay. lyrics great i would love to hear them one day did you hear Record that it send it to me <laughs> okay <Record> it send <laughs> all right i'll i'll try and send you the link because her daughter is saying uh one of them although she forgot the second verse but anyway <laughs> <laughs> she didn't she didn't forget whatever she and anyway she was apologetic to her mom and her mom was like you forgot the second verse anyway it's a great song with a great title which is um i won't remember but just the title line you would go oh god melba if you're if you're hearing this write the title of that song um so what about what about all the many different singers that you sang with and your obviously your approach is your approach but um the singers must have must have um been very interesting to sing with one singer who lays way back and one singer who lay you know who comes in early and speeds yeah yeah, yeah. anyway they're, they're all everybody has their own thing um the, my last 
stint with a singer or singers um, was I ended it ended about three three and a half four years ago it was with Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga. I did Tony Bennett for uh, three years. Yeah, and then I did the tour with Gaga. And we did yeah. Europe and stuff. Oh, and that really? was fun. That's a talented lady, by the way. Yeah, I mean not just off and stuff. I mean she can sing. Um, yeah. We used to do Lush Life every night, and she sang it, and it was great. Wow, cool. Yeah, I mean, that's not an easy song to sing. No. And she 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 did the right thing. A lot of people don't do this, and not on the verse, but on, on the body of the song. The first time it's da, 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 di. The second time it's da, da, da. It goes to the, you know, it goes, yes. uh, instead of a half step, it goes a whole step up. Yes. And she, she was one of the few who got it, because I still hear singers sing, Da 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 da, and that's wrong. Da 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 da. Yes. Da da. Everything. I know the spot you're talking about, and I'm I'm proud to say that I know that part. Oh, Gaga, Gaga got it right. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, because she she was good. And of course, Tony is Tony. You know, at the time he was 88 and still singing his heart out. Yeah. I taught his daughter for a little bit. She not she, yeah, she has a great voice, but she wanted to get she wanted to get have a looser approach, you know, like not sing the same way all the time, you know, just more of a jazz, you know, improv. Well, she used to open for Tony when I was with him. She opened most yeah. of the time because she got pregnant and couldn't do it anymore. Right. That's but, uh, yeah, no, she was she was the opening act, yeah. She's yep. a very nice person. Sweetheart, yeah. yeah. So Carmen's song, check out this title, Was I in Love Alone? Oh, God, that's pretty profound. It's a great song. <laughs> yeah. send, it on, send it on to the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you heard that, Melba. So as soon as I get it, I'll send it to you. <laughs> great. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, boy, um, Somebody said, "Is there anyone you haven't worked with?" <laughs> you, you, uh... yeah, Streisand. <laughs> oh, really? That's funny. Well, yeah, yeah that, she, Barbara's great, as we all know. There's no need to even go into that. But yeah, she's one of the few that uh, would have been great to play for. But she's not doing anything. Uh, she did make an in-person record, a live record, let's say, about six years ago at the Village Vanguard. Uh -huh. She brought California guys. The guy who had been Guys who had been playing with her a long time in Cal, you know. Tamir Handelman worked. Tamir Handelman was the pianist. I don't oh. know the bass player, drummer, were, but so uh, Tamir was had been playing for her and recording with her a lot, I guess, in, in sessions. So he came along, and it's a great record. I mean, but she can do it all. Another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's but he's one he's, that I haven't worked with. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Annie um, Ross, I worked with. Annie was great. Really? In fact, I made a record. I made a record with Annie. You did. Yeah. Yeah, I made a record with Diane Carroll too, oh. and Diane Carroll is is a magnificent singer. It, but you know, she had just finished uh, Sunset Boulevard in Toronto um, at the O'Keefe Center, I think it was. She had been doing that for a while. So when she came to New York to do the record, her voice was a little tired from doing all the Broadway stuff. So we we rested and we rehearsed easy at a nice easy pace, and we made a nice record. Yeah, she. No, I remember good. listening to her when, as I was growing up, she was. Yep. Yeah, she was a wonderful singer. There's yeah. another couple I forgot about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I want to say this other singer, but I can't remember her name. Anyway, we there. There was so many really. Yeah, you probably worked with a, a bunch of those singers that I had seen when I was growing up um, in that in that period that I was talking about. Yeah, it was just so um, there was a professionalism. There actually there's a singer here in Los Angeles who carries that. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard her Sherry Williams. I know the name. I don't I've never heard her sing. She has a series, a long time series that she's been running from Temecula, um, you know, which is quite a drive from here. But um, she's when when I first knew her in the seventies, the late seventies, um, she was she was carrying on that tradition. Very elegant, beautiful singer, arrangements, and just you know just really 
smart and classy and she still is she's a wonderful singer um you would you would love her singing really good oh. yeah yeah i'll hear her one day yeah i think melba um I, there was a series for many years in new york city at the 92nd street ymha called lyrics and lyricists maurice levine was the executive producer and i did a lot of maurice's work in fact i played most of those things they would come on once a month on the weekends at the at the Y, beautiful auditorium. Yeah. Uh, I think Melba was on one of those shows. I think that's how I met her originally. Probably doing the lyrics of Andy Razaf or something. Maybe she sang Honeysuckle Rose. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. But anyway, uh, we got to do a lot of great lyricists. And of course, a lot of talent showed up. Maurice would hire a lot of the Broadway people or somebody like Melba. They would come on and we would rehearse for a week and get all the songs down. So I got to work with a lot of different ones that are not necessarily that well known, but I was thinking about Melba. I think that's why I met her. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I know I was saying to her and, you know, I always hesitate to say this to people because I, I mean, I don't care when people say it to me, but you never know. But Melba was uh, really out of the tribe of like Ella and, you know, as in, as was Mary Stallings too, I was saying, but, she was yeah but she was melba was stunning she was a great singer but she and i'm sure she was you know she was known in a broad circle but not as famous as ella you know uh right. yes melba says yeah she sang honeysuckle rose with yeah, you I, it came back to me after all these years I'm sitting here thinking about it it just floated into my consciousness <laughs> That's it was wild, great. Huh? Was great shows. Great shows. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, wow. So I know that you worked on Sesame Street for 11 oh. years. I know you worked for um, for soap operas. Yes. Um, yes. And, and was that as enjoyable as Sesame Street? Uh, no. Well, let's say it was equally enjoyable as far as being able to create some music that made sense with lyrics or all situations with the soaps uh with with sesame because i had a band all the time and uh i had to do like zydeco arrangements uh, uh hip-hop arrangements so it got to be more fun that way whereas with the soaps uh, the music supervisor would give me like like a grocery list uh some some episodes had to be scored <laughs> Right to the sim, right to the film, because of certain things like when they did a European thing in in Hungary, I had to research some Hungarian music and make it sound that way, and that was done right to the film. But most of the time, I'd get a grocery list, and I call it a grocery list. Yeah. But it would say I need four heavy tension cues, and he would he would uh, put down uh, a murder might happen. He would give me little things to say, you know. Uh, little little uh, clues as to what he's yeah. looking for. Yeah. And then I want four light tension ones, like perhaps somebody's going to leave somebody. You know, blah blah blah. <laughs> Marriage is going down the sewer. That <laughs> thing. Yeah. Some romantic music by the fireplace. Oh, oh, they're going to do it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and some background music. They're in a, they're in a fancy restaurant and uh, they're ordering a great dinner with wine and blah 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 and there's a tinkling piano in the background that kind of thing so i yeah. had like a, a list to do and most of those sessions were done i would say every six months yeah yeah and then they build up they accumulate a library and they they reuse them what's nice about all of this stuff is that you keep on getting reuse money from ascap you know because i'm an ascap person yeah and um the, all the soaps and and even the sesame things even though the shows i did uh, mostly in the past they're still shown in europe a lot of different countries. And of course, there's music cue sheets filled out and they sent to ASCAP. So it, it trickles in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the nice thing about, about soaps and, and shows like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's, that's you know, a lot better than uh, writing records and trying to, making records and trying to make money from records. Oh. <laughs> Especially nowadays. Nowadays, <laughs> it's a whole different another planet <laughs> it really is it's a good yeah. thing my husband had had some kind of a you know <laughs> a past income 
<laughs> Although I do make a little money, but not from that, for sure. Uh, yeah, my husband was a lighting director on The Tonight Show. Oh, great. Yeah. I was on The Tonight Show a couple of times. I might have seen him and not even knew it. Yeah, I was, probably. I was with Peggy twice, Peggy Lee, uh -huh. and I was with Maureen McGovern twice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. nice. Yeah. I got to, get to meet Ross. Ross. He was, he was, yeah, he was the pianist with the band, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he oh, was yeah, a really great. interesting guy. He gave me a, he gave me a little a book. It's probably small compared to what you know, but he gave me a handwritten book by somebody. It wasn't by you, was it? Um, about uh, with um, uh, verses. No, you, you never it? wrote a verse, right? No. I mean, a book about verses. I'll have to send it to you. You you might be amused by it. You know, and yeah, that sounds something that I would like it. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It, and it, anyway, it was just. It's kind of a memento for me too. I was. I was uh, very dear friends with Ross's wife too. She was, you know, one of my very dear friends, and mm -hmm. Ross was so such an interesting man. You know, he wasn't super talkative, uh, but he was. He was present, you know, and he. Um, she died of cancer. You know, kind of one of those. You know, bad, long. You know, painful things, and after she died it was maybe a few months later that he died. <laughs> he just, it was like, it was one of those, yeah, I'm not hanging out here without her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was really. I'm quite a pianist boy, I tell you. Uh, uh, when I first moved to New York, uh, there, there, a lot of stories about Ross playing with a lot of different people and I know how great yeah. he was. But I, I remember, um, oh, I know what it was. Um, somebody in, Somebody told me that Russ had a, a nickname called the Phantom. That's right. Because <laughs> you disappear right after the game. Disappear and show up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, on the show, like on the show. Yeah. On the show, he would play, and as soon as it was over, you looked around and he was gone. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I think how I know, I remember how this came up. Uh, Maureen sang I'm All Smiles on one of the shows, and I did a, a band shot for her, and I wrote. For I played acoustic piano. And I wrote an electric piano part for Ross. Uh -huh. For Ross, and it was it was you know just very easy, but it was you know single notes that doubled something or other. It was it was just a nice tinkly sound, and so we're getting ready to rehearse, and Ross was there, and then he disappeared, and we were getting ready, and I said, oh, there's a a, a Fender Rhodes part here, and and Ross is not here. They go, he'll show up at the last minute. He's known as the Phantom. That's how it was. And sure <laughs> he came in and played it, and then he went away. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Do you know that he did not have a piano in his house? <laughs> oh, you're kidding me, really? I'm not kidding. It's it was so. I was like, hmm, okay. I mean, he would sit in at various places around town, you know. And uh, I mean, when he would make records, he would just go in, play for an hour and that was the record you know and uh but he yeah he didn't have a piano in his house oh, for years amazing <laughs> yeah really interesting um yeah so um um let's 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 go hear a little bit more music so i i did see that um that young man who you were speaking of yeah i saw that and um <clears throat> Maybe you could play one by him if you want. He's a young guy, but he sings good. Right here? Uh, oh, no, well, no, well, let me see. Uh, is that the only one by him there? Or I saw something well, else. Well, uh, right here, Come Fly With Me. Come Fly With Me featuring Chris. No, that isn't it, no. Um, as far as a video goes, it, I have to see you at, at I have to see what. No, this don't, is. please don't play that. <laughs> really? No, okay. don't. Okay. All right. I'll uh, close this out. Go, go back. Go back up there. Um, yeah. Uh, let me see. What, now what I could say? type in well, his name. Well, you know what? Do, do that. That's live at Birdland. We we did. I think the song on that particular thing is "You Must Believe in Spring" you know, by the Bergmans and Michelle Legrand. Yeah. That song. Yeah, I think that's what's the sound there. So it's only a couple of minutes long. See. Sure. See if it's right there.
beautiful beautiful playing um thank you thank you i appreciate that uh, yeah it was he sings his he's a young man but he sings great with a lot of feel great uh, pitch yeah. you know yeah. just everything's right that's lovely and uh my dear friend who i guess you guys might know each other mike patterson michael patterson oh yes yeah <laughs> Yeah, he's a very good friend of mine. Yeah, and he's, uh, I interviewed him on too because he used to live here. And uh, so, um, anyway, he said one of your great CDs is the uh, tribute CD that you did with Jack Jones. Oh, uh, Tony Bennett tribute. Yeah, that's a nice CD. I forgot about that one. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for that. I like that. Yeah, that's one of my favorites too. And he said you're playing as an inspiration. Well, thank you again. <laughs> Appreciate that very much. I'm getting my Thanksgiving gifts early. <laughs> that's, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's talk about Jack Jones. So you worked okay. with Jack Jones a lot. A lot. In fact, I just talked to Jack two nights ago. You know, okay. he's in Palm Springs. We, 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 we talk at least once or twice a month. Just He's got a great sense of humor. And he calls me <laughs> some jokes sometimes, you know, and then we talk about music and stuff like that. So Jack is, his voice has gotten deeper. Uh, you know that beautiful romantic sound he had when he was young? Well, yeah. he still got that, that great timbre, but it's more like, it's a huskier sound. I kind of like it a lot. Huh. Well, my friend used to work with him, Tom Garvin. Oh, um, I know Tom, sure. Now he was singing with him. I, I think singing with him actually was and Lou maybe Lou Matthews too <clears throat> they were the, the the kind of experiences that made me stop <laughs> like and, and kind of in shock it's like what just happened you know it's he, I don't know something about Tom was his, his the where he was what he was his support his of course musicality but there was something very um incredible about singing with him but anyway he he loved jack jones <clears throat> and he used to talk about him a lot and um and of course when you listen to jack jones you hear the elegance and the smart smart oh, yeah. musician in there <clears throat> um did you play on uh jack's one at a time yes I have a friend in Santa Barbara who's asking. Yeah. yeah I've that, yes. In fact, I think we recorded that in California. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that would be nice, uh, something nice to see. Is Are there any live performances that you think we could find? With Jack, there was one at the Algonquin, the Oak Room, of him doing Windmills of Your Mind, and it was outstanding. He sang the living you-know-what out of it. Yeah. I, I, it was just piano and voice, too. Maybe that. I, uh, windmills of your mind at the Algonquin. Okay. The, the Oak Room. All right. I hope you don't mind me looking at all this. <clears throat> Jack Jones. 
windmills of your mind. Uh, now, uh, let's see if we can find the one at the Oak Room. <clears throat> hmm. uh, let me see if I could put in a little bit more uh, at the Oak Room. Uh, maybe not. Hmm. I know it was a video. I've I've seen it not recently, but it was it was really nice. Oh, really? Yeah. It was a while back. I mean, it wasn't maybe it was a couple of years ago at least, but I did see it. And uh he sounded great on it and Okay, well, I'll, I'll go look for it again at some point. <clears throat> um hey. So, um yeah. So there's a nice there's a nice recording on that uh, the album that Mike Patterson mentioned, uh, the Tony Bennett tribute. Oh yeah, uh, Jack did all the Tony songs, and we did it with a trio. We did that, believe it or not, in Nashville, of all places, to do a Tony Bennett record. But it was it was um, it was the record producer's friend's studio, a nice little studio too. Anyway, um, did you say I, Tony uh, Bennett tribute? Right. Uh, yeah, paints a tribute to Tony Bennett. It was you know a play on the word because Tony's a painter also. Oh, right. Uh, there's uh, it was Johnny Mandel's um, passing, and I, I think I posted "Shadowy Smile" sung by Jack, and he, Jack just sang sang it so great. I have I haven't I, here Skylark. Who can I turn to? All my tomorrows. Oh, I left my heart in San Francisco. It would yeah. be nice to hear. That. Let's let's hear that because since we've been what San Francisco? Yeah, this oh, one. Well, you could play that, or you could play. Um, the shadow of your smile. Oh, I'm sorry. Shadow of your smile. It's on that record, yeah. Here we go. Yes, it's it's Jack just sings it so beautifully. Yeah. Oops. Here, I'm <laughs> sorry about that. That, that usual is, stuff. Gosh. The shadow of your smile when you are gone. See the difference in the voice? Yeah. Will color all my dreams. Yeah, they're low. And light the dawn. Look into my eyes, my love, and see all the lovely things. You are to me. That beautiful, amazing. Beautiful. Our wistful little star was far too high. Teardrop kissed your lips And so did I Now when I remember spring And all the joy that love can bring I will be remembering <laughs> the shadow of your smile
our wistful little star. A teardrop kissed your lips And so did I Now when I remember spring And all the joy that love can bring Jack sing, sings, just sang it so romantically, you know? Yeah, very great. He got the mood, you know, it just it was just great. Such a beautiful song, too. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah, that's just, yeah. Um, you know, it was one of those songs that was sung a lot on casuals or GB. And <laughs> GB things, yeah. So people, musicians sometimes are like, oh, God, the shadow of your smile again, you know? But it really and truly, it is a beautiful yeah. song. Gorgeous song. It's not like feelings. You know? No, and even feelings. One time, I had a great experience with with a great you know, feeling. Feelings, if it's done right, is just a very, very passionate song. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like um, uh, uh, everybody swings night and day, night and day, boom, dee, da. But if you listen to those lyrics, it's a passionate, crazy love story. Just think of the look. If you didn't know the melody and you read those things, it would be a, a, it would be like a tormented soul. <laughs> I know. There's two other yeah. songs like that too. The more I see you, a lot of people oh, swing. With the verse. But it's it's yeah. It's really it's it really shouldn't swing. <laughs> you love that you know? verse. Each time uh, I look at you like the first time. Yeah. Each time you see the thrill is new. And there is nothing that I wouldn't do for the mid delight of the sight of you. The more I see you, oh, it's just a great song. Oh Gorgeous. There's to... another song too that an older guy said to me. This song should be a ballad. It was sung to the to the uh, during the Second World War, and to, and it's um, um, there will never be another you. Oh, that is a ballad. It's a gorgeous ballad. Yeah, I made I made a a, a a record with. Do you remember the name of, of Marlene Verplank? Yes, I oh, have a record I, of hers. Yeah, I, I well, I made a record with her, and 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 we did. Uh, there will never be another you as a ballad. It was just beautiful. Yes, really amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Well, am I boring you? <laughs> it's, it's, it's no, you're not boring me. I hope I hope you're okay for. I mean, usually we go for two hours. It's but it's up to you. But oh, I I do have to leave it about let's say in about ten fifteen minutes. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Only because I got to bring somebody food. <laughs> oh, some, okay. Some, some old, uh, an old lot of mine is not going to have Thanksgiving because she's quite old. But I'm going to bring her some stuff. So anyway, oh. I have to get there before. You know, with all well, this new quarantine stuff, you know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Unless you want to um, continue with some other day. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. This is this is good. Um, I, I, so great. I'm. I'm. It's like wow. <laughs> to talk about it, right? And to just yeah. Well, you ask such good questions, and then it brings it brings back a lot of memories and stuff that I've kind of stored away without thinking about them for a while. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have a, you have a bunch of women on and a guy, but the women are just like dying over you, <laughs> and they're singers. <laughs> oh, <but> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just so delicious is one comment. You know, just you know, lots of great. Oh, stuff. Yeah. Great, thank you. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, and uh, Elaine D Dame, I just wanted to say, read what she wrote because it's so nice. And this is a nice gift for you to go away with. Although you can look at these comments later, but it said, Thank man, you. this has been a boon today. It's so comforting to hear and talk about great music now. This tune is killing me. Speaking of dames, uh, I made a couple of records with Cleo Lane, Dame Cleo Lane. Oh, oh. she was, a, she was a, a singer that when I grew, when I was young and I, that was, she was one of the singers I was listening to. Uh, yeah, it's, it was a nice record. I think Jerry, Jerry Mulligan's on it. Um, Mm. Uh, uh, she wow. does a great. She does a great couple of songs by uh, an English composer. Um, <laughs> his name just. Um, uh, yeah. um, anyway, I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he seems really think of it. But he, he, I can't think anyway. of it, but yeah, I can't think of it right now either. Anyway, uh, one of them, one of the songs was "I Told You So." I heard it on the grapevine, straight from the horse's mouth. That one there, Duncan Lamont. Yes. Yeah, it just came to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> she did a couple of songs on that, and I, I was on those tracks. And I tell you, she sang with such feeling that when I was playing, you know, her husband John had John Dankworth had written yeah. the arrangement, and it was a nice, beautifully written piano part. So I'm reading it and I'm playing it, but I'm listening to her in the headset, and she sang it so emotionally that I I started getting verklempt. It was like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> oh, the song. Wow, she she just sang the, you know, she was great. Yeah, yeah, she had an amazing voice. Probably, uh, I I learned all blues from her, from her. Oh yeah, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, really great stuff. Um, so, and you do you live right in the city now, in New York? No, uh, I. Sold my apartment there, and I have a house in Florida uh, that oh. I've had for a long time. But um, I got this little kind of a, a pier de terre up here in Newport, Rhode Island. So with all the travel limitations, I'm staying up here most of the time. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, of course, I'll go down next month for the yeah. holidays and all that stuff. And I'll yeah. spend a good part of the time there. And then for the summertime, I come back up here because um, – the weather, you know, Florida can be oppressive in the summer. Yeah. But uh, it, it's nice. And then, of course, because New York is shut down, I was doing a lot of stuff in New York. And that's one of the reasons why I had the house up here, because it it's only a two and a half hour drive to New York. Yeah. So, but that's all uh, right now in the pause mode. So we'll see where that's going to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so did you did you do a lot of work in Boston when you were younger? Yeah, I did the TV show in Boston. And of course, uh, I played for a while with Herb Pomeroy's band. He had a big band there. I was a student yeah. at Berkeley. I went to the Boston Conservatory and Berkeley. They had okay, a what, when, yeah, what year were you at Berkeley? I'm sure it was a different year than me, but anyway. 1974. Really? I was there. Yeah. I graduated in 74. I was there from 72 to 75. Well, at that time, though, maybe when you were there, I was more at the conservatory because they had the joint oh. program there. So oh, I was doing okay. my classical and all my my stuff, my studies there. I was classically trained earlier. Yeah. And so the the, the Berkeley jazz thing. But then when I got to the conservatory, it brought all back to me. I brought all my old repertoire out again. Yeah. So was, but there were a lot of like you know history of music type things and yeah, the, all the academics. Yeah, yeah. It built Berkeley had such great buildings at that time. You know the smaller yeah. smaller buildings smaller. one on Marlboro Street. Man, that was. That was yeah. cool. Newberry Street was the original one. Yeah, right. Actually, Newberry, not Marlboro, right? Yeah, Newberry. Newberry Street, yeah. Now Mass yeah. Avenue, of course, the whole complex. Yeah. yeah. Um, Alan Asher said he's enjoying this. And how many chords has he stolen from you over the years? Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> that is so great. As, as many as I've stolen from Bill Evans and Claire Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mike, um, I don't and also, know. also Ravel and Stravinsky. <laughs> Everything. By the way, that, that great book by Vincent Persichetti called 20th Century Harmony has a lot of stuff in it that I lifted also. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any uh, words of wisdom you want to share with people before you go? Um, Jesus, coming from me, wisdom sounds kind of like an oxymoron. Okay, okay we'll just say. Do you have any words you want to share with? Do you want? Do you have anything you want to say? 
stay in love with music because it, it pulls you to a lot of tough times. That's it. And uh, piano players, if you're young and you haven't had the experience, start, take a ballad. It's better to start with a ballad and just play it a key a day. Learn how to play it as well in E as you would in E flat. And uh, that's a great workout. Um, I've, I did it for years. In fact, I still do it once in a while. If I sit at the piano, I said, you know what? I think I'll play, uh, you go to my head in B. You know, and then I'll do it. And it, it keeps keeps everything going. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know what? It, there's something, there's some bit of truth to use it or lose it. I mean, really. Yeah. 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 If we can continue this sometime at your leisure or your, your, your pleasure, I would really like to, because there's so many things. I love your questions. Cool. All right. Great. We'll do it again then. And thank Mike Lang for me, will you? For, for introducing will. us. Yeah. He's, he's, he's an unbelievable musician and great pianist. Yeah. And he's adorable. Indeed. I mean, <laughs> I love he plays him. Everything. He plays everything. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. Well, say hi to your aunt and have a happy Thanksgiving. I will. And you, same to you. And listen, hopefully this will, um, this thing that we're all, under the umbrella of will disappear yes. shortly. Yes. We got to keep, keep thinking that. Yeah. All okay. right. Have a Thank great you. day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. <clears throat> you can, you can actually sign off. I'll just tell the people who's, who's coming next week. So. Okay. Let me see. Where's the sign off thing? Leave. There it is. Bye Mike. Bye. -bye. <laughs> and uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mike Renzi accompanist to hundreds of our favorite singers over the years. Um, and next week, I just wanted to tell you who's coming next week. Uh, Monday is a really wonderful pianist. Um, he's really interesting. He's got a really interesting career. And uh, I think it was, it, it was either Toby Simmons or, um, or uh, my friend from Seattle, whose name is on the tip of my brain and uh, who introduced me. I think Toby actually, actually, I knew Brian before, but Toby kind of reacquainted us. And his name is Brian Pizzone. And um, that should be really interesting. I'm looking forward to that. I, I have to tell you, I look forward to each, <laughs> each person <laughs> for various reasons, you know. Uh, I mean, look at this week. This week was amazing. Gail Boyd, who I loved speaking with on Monday, artist manager, big artist manager. Re what a real person. That was great. And then later that day, Leroy Downs, who's a great jazz DJ in LA, but known everywhere and has great taste, great experiences. Then, then there was Melba Joyce yesterday, who I was so honored to have. And she's, she's actually here under her, her daughter's uh, name on uh, Facebook, Carmen Bradford. And that was amazing. I was so impressed and, and in awe. And uh, today, Mike Renzi. But anyway, Brian Pazone, that'll be Monday. And Tuesday, <clears throat> I have an old friend of mine who is one of the greatest swing singers ever, Stephanie Nikazian. She's on the East Coast. And she has the honor of being uh, the mother of Veronica Swift. And um, one time when Veronica was about 12 or maybe, no, actually younger, I think. Uh, anyway, I've, I've been in the habit for years of inviting uh, out of town guests, singers, and um, to come here and I would get, create a workshop, a vocal workshop for them and sometimes a gig and, and have them stay at my house too. And uh, so Stephanie came with her husband who, was the great Hod O'Brien, a really top bebop piano player, very renowned, and um, and their daughter, little Veronica. <laughs> and um, she made her first record, I think, when she was 12. Anyway, now she's Veronica Swift, the most talented young singer, amazing. Steph, so Stephanie, Stephanie Nikazi, and she'll be on Tuesday. She's she's a lovely person and really a great singer. And then Wednesday is uh, someone I I haven't met, but um, I've heard him and we've communicated online. 
he's from Brazil. And I mean, literally, he is in Brazil. And he's an incredible piano player. His name name is Benjamin, not Benjamin, but Benjamin to, uh, Tobkin, Benjamin, Benjamin Tobkin. And he's an older guy, and he's extremely well uh, renowned. And um, that should be an interesting conversation. Woo! And as as long as I have you captive audience, I'll tell you the next week. The next week is because I'm doing Monday through Wednesday mostly. Um, Monday is an old friend of mine who um, was a professor at San Diego University, and uh, he was. He actually was the arranger and pianist on my very first record. Uh, his name is Rick Helzer, Richard Helzer. And that record, you know how sometimes you, you'll you hear a record that you'll love, an old jazz record, and it will seem timeless, right? And like Miles or something, you know. Um, you know, you put it on and it's timeless. It just fills up this particular space. That's how Rick is. He's really, he's really a talented person and musician. Um, and he's on Monday and Tuesday, I have a really wonderful and interesting singer who some of you may know. And I'm, I'm looking because I want to pronounce her name right. Aylette Rose Gottlieb. Aylette. I'm pretty sure that's how you, she pronounces her first name. She is a friend of Jay Clayton's and a cohort in crime. And she's, a, she's, a very strong individual, a uh, strong artist, and uh, really creates some amazing things. I mean, she's very she's very impressive, and um, so she's uh, December eighth, and December 9th is a trumpet player who's played on so many tracks of so much TV and movies, and he's actually the. I have to do my homework. President or vice president? I think it's the vice president of the LA Musicians Union. So that's interesting. His name is Rick Baptist, and that's going to be fun too. Okay, those are the two weeks. You can always go on my on my uh, website and find out who's playing. You can join my email list if you want. I send out an occasional you know update. And um, uh, if you haven't heard my new single please go hear it. It's on my Facebook page and uh, it's on YouTube and it's called Sermonette, uh, which was written by Nat Adderley, John Hendricks with extra lyrics by Kathy Siegel Garcia. I hope you enjoy that. Have a, have a great Thanksgiving. Let's uh, really replace any kind of upset in our lives with a lot of love and um, positiveness you know, love always erases the bad stuff. Always. If you really send out love to anybody or anything that is upsetting or bad, that will dissolve. That bad will dissolve. <clears throat> and I can tell you that for sure because I've experienced that a number of times. So with that good wish, have a beautiful Thanksgiving. I'm going to be sending out lots of love to you guys. And I'll see you on Monday. Bye.